Thank you to all of our underwriters. All American Trophies, for all your custom screen printing and embroidery needs, located on South Broadway. Art Main, women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies, 13 Main Street South. Buffalo Wild Wings, sports, great beer, and food located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Digital Office Center, technology solutions for every business need, located in Minot and Bismarck. MSU Beaver Hockey. Visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. MSU Athletics, NCAA Division II, promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. Red and Green, Minot State's official student-run newspaper. Midwest Oil Jobs brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest to connect under one roof. Bridgeford Construction, LLC, for all your concrete needs, residential and commercial. Jacobson Music, a family-owned music business with three retail locations in Dickinson, Bismarck, and Minot. Pepsi, the local Pepsi-Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas of Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, and Botano. Fiance Bridal, located in downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. Watney Realtors, full-service real estate agencies handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. You can visit them online at MinotHomes.com. Watney Realtors, Kerry Montoya, located on Northwest Broadway. Spicy Pie, Pizza, Grinders, Beer, located at the Beaver Ridge Plaza. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, good times to be together. KYYX FM 97 Kicks, today's hot new country. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. KIZZ FM Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. KZTR FM 105.3 The Fox, Minot's rock station. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's Classic Hits. KXMA, Mix 99.9, Minot's Best Music Mix. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibits and art events. Pita Pit, fresh thinking, healthy eating, located on South Broadway. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. iHeart Media, providing multi-platform advertising and marketing opportunities for partners and world-class entertainment for listeners. People are preparing for a big Halloween weekend. More to come. Good news for trick-or-treaters. Warmer weekend, when weekend weather is on its way for Halloween, and I've got your full forecast coming up later on in the show. With a look at Magicon and MSU men's basketball, we have that and a lot more right here on MSU Inside Out. Welcome to MSU Inside Out. I'm Nolan Axton. Alex Coleman. We're here with you again, Alex, and again, another jam-packed show, jam-packed weekend coming up. Uh, all sorts of good things. we got Halloween at the auditorium. If you have little kids, you can take them out there. A Magicon also going on this weekend. I know that's going to be exciting. Uh, you get to look into that a little bit later. Oh, I'm excited. I was uh, talking backstage with them. It's going to be a huge show, a huge event. It's going to be big time. So That's pretty exciting. I know uh, Alexis has more on a Magicon and a few other things. So Ale or Alexis, pardon me, I almost called you Alex, but <laughs> it's a great you, name. You have so. a lot. Uh, it's pretty close, close enough. <laughs> you have a lot for us today. <laughs> yeah, lots of stuff going on for Halloween, so it's going to be a pretty fun weekend. So All right. looking mm -hmm. forward to it. Excited to tell you guys a little bit more. <laughs> Even the animals got into the fun as Roosevelt Park Zoo held their annual Halloween celebration. As always, Boo at the Zoo attracted families in all types of Halloween costumes while kids filled up their candy bags, enjoying all the spooks and scares. Zoo staff set up 11 haunted trick-or-treat stations and had story time, hay rides, and the zoo bears hosted a pumpkin smash. All types of characters were lined up outside the zoo waiting to get into the pre-Halloween extravaganza before next weekend. A couple of Boo at the Zoo trick-or-treaters tell us why Halloween is their favorite time of year. Handing out candy to people. My favorite part of Halloween 
is trick or treating. Where you get to see people's costumes. Boo at the Zoo wrapped up at 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Toilet Paper Tuesday was the phrase of the day at Eric Ramstead Middle School earlier this week. A group of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders in an after-school program called Circle of Friends thought of Toilet Paper Tuesday as an idea for a service project. This group challenged their school to collect toilet paper to donate to the YWCA, Domestic Violence Crisis Center, and the Men's Winter Refuge. Circle of Friends is an international program that encourages students with and without disabilities to come together to make a positive impact in their school and community. Seventh grade student Will Novak says that doing a service project like this allows him to make connections with people in Minot and share stories with one another. It makes me feel happy and I sort of like spending time with people with my types of abilities. Students and faculty brought in over 400 toilet paper rolls to split three ways to the organizations. The man at the heart of a newly released film visited Western North Dakota last weekend. Hank Irwin's two sons directed the film based on stories their father shared with them as boys. Irwin says he used to coach a football team in Birmingham, Alabama during a time when many of his players faced struggles of faith. The film titled Woodlawn is about how love and unity overcame hate and division taking place in Birmingham in the early 1970s. I heard the Woodlawn story as bedtime stories when they were small little toddlers and they grew up saying, Daddy, one day we're going to make that into a motion picture. So lo and behold, here 30 years later, they've brought it out in a major release. It has been received all over the country in amazing ways. Woodlawn is available for viewing in about a thousand theaters nationwide. To prepare students for a spooky Halloween this weekend, MSU Life is hosting a costume-themed karaoke night. Prizes will be given to the best costume and to those who are brave enough to step on stage and sing. The event is free to all Minot State students. Free food and candy will be there for the early trick-or-treaters at 8 p.m. in the Beaver Dam tonight. A Magicon is coming to town tomorrow and will stay throughout the weekend. Here's a sneak peek into the first one that comes to Minot. On October 30th and 31st, join thousands in the epic event in Minot, North Dakota, a Magicon. Imagine the possibilities. Thor, Spider-Man, Bloodshot are a couple names you might see at this year's first ever Magicon. I'm here with Doug Haas, CEO of Haas Line Entertainment, who is putting on this year's Mag uh, Magicon. So, Doug, tell me a little bit, a bit about what exactly is Haas Line Entertainment. Uh, <clears throat> Haas Line Entertainment is a uh, company that's been uh, hired. I wish I was putting it on, <laughs> but I'm not. We have some great people here in Minot that are putting it on. Uh, we've been hired to come in and talk about uh, one of the new players in the comic book and fandom world called Valiant Entertainment. Um, they have five movies coming out from Sony Pictures, um, and we're excited to come here and unveil what Valiant's going to be doing over the next year. Yeah, those who don't know, Valiant Comic Books is the third largest you know, comic book in, in the industry. But as you said, they also, there's Marvel, the rest of them, but you know, Valiant, they lead in all of like the Harvey Awards, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Valiant is the third lar uh, company as far as reading. However, uh, when it comes to the aficionado for comic book reading, Valiant takes the first claim away from Marvel and DCs. So that's going to be really exciting the weekend. It uh, starts uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning. Starts tomorrow, and we have uh, editor Warren Simon's going to be there, the head editor from Valiant, uh, on a Skype panel discussion. So get there for that. He's going to unveil all the exciting news that Valiant is bringing to, uh, to the uh, comic book universe, and it's going to be unveiled right here at a Magicon. And you're actually going to be on a few panels too, correct? I am, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the comic book industry and uh, about the entertainment industry so if you're interested in that you know fandom is a growing uh, not only a growing marketplace but it's a growing marketplace for jobs and for people who are into entertainment so we invite you to come and, and hear about the exciting world of entertainment through a magic con tomorrow because when you said it's, a, it's growing 
one of the things that you told me that I was really surprised with, you said Facebook only grew by 8% and the fandom grew by 64%. On, fa on Facebook grew by 64%. So fandom is, continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think we all know through places like Netflix, um, and all on the internet that the, uh, the need for more content and the need for more movies and the need for more books, it's just growing and growing and growing. We can't get enough of it. <laughs> so getting a little bit into a magic con, for those that are unfamiliar, what exactly is cosplay? Cosplay is where you can come and dress up like your favorite character. It um, uh, doesn't have to be comic book. It can be uh, Star Wars, it, and we ba basically interact on stage. I think it's a great opportunity for kids to kind of let their hair down, grow a personality that they maybe d are inhibited to do, maybe at school or at home, um, and just uh, improvise and have fun. So this is a great time to do it. There's actually a cosplay contest. It's Halloween, so it's over 100 you know, entries, correct? There is, and I hear there's some awesome prizes. I think $1,000 uh, for, for, uh, in prizes. So uh, you really ought to come down and enter, and you ought to come down and at least watch, because if you haven't seen a cosplay, a Magicon's the place to go see it. Oh, I will definitely be there. You'll be there. I'll be there. Super Superheroes, everything's going to be there. So. Getting into superheroes, I have to ask this because you know the Batman, Superman movies coming out. Yeah. Who would you pick, Batman versus Superman? Well, you know, I uh, did a little role in Daredevil, which Ben Affleck was in. So I'm going to have to go with my man Ben, even though the the fandom world is kind of batting down on him. I'm going with Ben, and I think uh, Batman's going to win that war. Uh, I agree with you. So one more thing too, I want to point out is that shirt. <laughs> That You're, is a great shirt. <laughs> and look at that shirt. It says Minot on there. And so. one of our creators here, Le uh, Leanne Mellum, she's the one who actually changed the design here on a Valiant uh, Harbinger design and put Minot on there. So these shirts are for sale down there. So get one because these are, are the real deal and a rare deal. And also a little teaser, uh, you never know which A-list actor might be wearing them in an upcoming movie too, correct? That's right. The two designs you'll see at a Magicon are going to be the two shirts that we uh, have the actors wear when we reveal who the cast is for Bloodshot, which is the first two movies at Sony. And then Harbinger will be the second two movies. And then the two characters will come together and fight in Harbinger Wars. All right, you heard it here first. So once again, a Magic Con, the very first ever. So uh, we're starting tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Absolutely. And ending 9 o'clock Saturday, correct? Correct. So go out there, check it out. It's going to be an amazing event, cosplay, characters, everything. So once again, Doug Haas, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank Glad you. to be here. Uh, still more to come. We have a look at your weekend weather forecast. We have um, Matthew Merkin, which is our MSU basketball coach. Maybe even a look into their game last night against the Blue Hawks. So uh, thank you very much, Doug, again. Thank you. And kicking it to our underwriters. Our underwriters. All American Trophies for all your custom screen printing and embroidery needs. Located on South Broadway. Art Main, women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies. 13 Main Street South. Buffalo Wild Wings, sports, great beer, and food located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Digital Office Center, technology solutions for every business need. Located at Minot and Bismarck. MSU Beaver Hockey. Visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. MSU Athletics, NCAA Division II, promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. Red and Green, Minot State's official student-run newspaper. Midwest Oil Jobs brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest to connect under one roof. Bridgeford Construction LLC for all your concrete needs, residential and commercial. Jacobson Music, a family-owned music business with three retail locations in Dickinson, Bismarck, and Minot. Pepsi, the local Pepsi Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas of Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, and Botano. Fiance Bridal, located in downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. Watney Realtors, full-service real estate agencies handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. You can visit them online at MinotHomes.com. Watney Realtors, Kerry Montoya, located on Northwest Broadway. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer, located at the Beaver Ridge Plaza. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, good times to be together. KYYX FM 97 Kicks, today's hot new country. KCJB 910 AM. 
Minot's news and information station. KIZZ-FM Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. KZTR-FM 105.3 The Fox, Minot's rock station. KRRZ 1390 AM, Minot's classic hits. KXMA Mix 99.9, Minot's best music mix. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibits and art events. Pita Pit, fresh thinking, healthy eating, located on South Broadway. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. iHeart Media, providing multi-platform advertising and marketing opportunities for partners and world-class entertainment for listeners. El Azteca, authentic Mexican cuisine, fresh and fast. Welcome back to MSU Inside Out. Again, I'm Nolan Axton. Alex Coleman. Pretty good first half of the show. That uh, interview was pretty cool. It sounds like the MatchCon's... Oh, it's going to be huge. It sounds it's sweet. Um, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people. I'll be there in a Green out. Lantern costume. Green Lantern. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Um, getting away from the MagicCon, though, in the, the comic book world and the superhero world, going to look at the sports world. Lots going on on campus this weekend. Oh, yeah. We got volleyball, soccer, football. We even have our hockey Maybe player. A little hockey. Little hockey. <laughs> well, no one else dressed up, but I decided I want to be a hockey player for Halloween. Well, That's all that matters. It's, yeah, you, you I actually know, knocked my protection. teeth out earlier. Yeah, well, I thought I'd be nice. All right. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of great stuff that's going to happen this weekend, so I'll jump right into that. All right. Minot State Hockey had some talented individuals on their team, but no one, looks, no one has looked more as a leader than Cody Dickerson. His style of hockey it's a little really bit complimented less. what we were looking for with our program. You know, he's a gritty forward who can kill penalties, uh, bring a ton of energy to the rink, uh, block a bunch of shots. And so that's ultimately what we were looking for in a player, and he certainly fit that mold. And, you know, he's kind of a, a grinder, gritty kid. He kind of plays like a lot like Jarrett Stoll in the NHL. Anybody knows he played for the Kings and the uh, New York Rangers. You know, he's a dynamic type of kid who, uh, you know, will chip in every once in a while. He's not highly offensive, but you know what? We need him there to just be you know, the best that he is, and, and uh, last uh, weekend in Williston, he scored a big goal shorthanded, and that's the type of hockey he is, and that's how you win championships with, with guys like Cody, and, you know, he's great to be around the locker room, and he's a great teammate, and that's why he's a part of this team. Cody says he fell in love when his father took him to his first game. You know, it wasn't huge growing up uh, where I was, but um, odd chance, my dad took me to a game, and I just fell in love at first sight, I guess, told him I wanted to play, and... That's where it started. Cody finished playing at the Agra in Williston on Saturday where he scored a shorthanded goal. Uh, that was awesome. Um, yeah, you know, I didn't have to do much for the goal. There's a little bit of a broken play at, uh, in their zone. And uh, Brucey just came out the puck and two on one developed. And I just uh, went to the right area and he made a really nice pass. All I had to do was shoot it as hard as I could toward the left upper side of the net. and. Uh, Thank God it went in, you know, and, and it was kind of a monkey off my back early in the game because I, I absolutely wanted to get on the scoreboard. Uh, it's my last game in that building. It's pretty special for me. So to have my family there, and that, was, uh, that was a really good moment for me. Probably something I'll always remember. Cody says by far his best memory at Minot State will be his teammates and their time together. Hockey, my favorite thing about Minot State hockey is the camaraderie we have. The guys in the locker room, uh, being in that locker room some of the best times at, at college in general. Everyone sticks together and it's, it's awesome. It's like having a second family. And families make memories. You can catch Cody and the rest of the Beavers in action tomorrow night as they take on Williston in a rematch game at 5 p.m. in the Mesa Arena. Minot State women's soccer team broke a two-game losing streak on Sunday with a double overtime victory against Wayne State. The Beavers were looking at another tie game with only four minutes left in the clock in the final overtime when Beavers got a corner kick. Ashley Franco kicked the ball into a group of players where, uh, around the net. When a Wayne, plate, or Wayne State player kicked the ball out into the scum, Dahlia Tapia headed one back right towards the net where Nympha Ramirez ended up heading one right into the goal for the game-winning goal. The Beavers won the game 1-0 and earned them a home playoff game next Wednesday. The Beavers' next home action will be this Sunday at 1 p.m. against Northern State. And you know, guys, that's just a great thing that they were able to get back on track. After all, it could have been a lot worse if it would have ended in a tie again. 
Yeah, so I'm really happy with that one. So like, as you said, you know, we have a big game Sunday. So soccer game, which means hopefully we need good weather, right, Ashley? Yeah, you know, it's looking to be a lot warmer this weekend than it has been this whole week. So I'm excited. Works for me. Yeah, definitely. All right, so, so right now in Minot, it is actually 38 degrees. And um, we have a light wind out of the west, northwest, four miles per hour. And our humidity is right around 63%. Um, our sunrise was at 826 this morning, and our sun will be setting right around 631 tonight. Now, tonight we'll have cool temperatures as well. It will be mostly cloudy, and we will have some light winds as well, um, a low of 31 in Minot tonight. And for Friday, we will be seeing um, some highs around 50 to 55 degrees, in, and it will be partly cloudy. Um, it will be nicer than it has been, so that's the good news. And there will be less cloud coverage, um, so hopefully it won't be as gloomy as it has been throughout this week. Now for Friday night, it will be partly cloudy, and we will see some chances for rain and snow. 40% chance for rain um, in Minot on Friday night, and a 30% chance in Dickinson. And now for Saturday, uh, we will have a 30 to 60% chance for rain. Um, and it will be breezy with highs in the 50s to 60s. Now, Saturday night, we will um, see a mostly dry evening um, with wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour in Williston. Now, and we will also have nighttime lows in the 40s and 50s on Saturday. Now, for Sunday, it will be partly sunny and we'll have temperatures in the um, upper 50s and 60s with a 20% chance for rain on, in Williston on Sunday. Now looking at our extended forecast, Monday is looking to be nice and sunny with a high of right around 53 degrees. Um, but Tuesday, we will have a slight chance for rain with a high of just 43 degrees. And unfortunately, we might see, see some snow flurries on Wednesday. But overall, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just excited for the warm weather for Halloween. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen Halloween without snow. We had a few flakes the other day, but right, not, not too bad Hopefully though. they stay away. Yeah, I mean, yeah. As long as it's a, a white Christmas, but not a white Halloween. I'm yeah, happy. exactly. That's, right. That'll be perfect. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ashley. Yep, you're welcome. Now I have a pretty big guest here joining me, uh, entering his fourth year as head coach of the Minot State University men's basketball team, and uh, did it with a bang. Head coach Matt Merkin, thank you for uh, joining us yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, as I mentioned, opening the season with a bang, a 78-71 victory over Dixon State last night. How did it feel to start, start off with a big win? It was good. You play on the road. Um, it was a challenge for us. They've, they have a little bit different rules um, being at NAI school, so they've had about two more weeks of practice. So really they've had double the amount of practices that we've had. And to go on the road, it's kind of an old rivalry, so it was fun. Um, we got a, get a road win. It's a good experience for us down the stretch. Uh, you know, get back at about 2.30 in the morning or so, and then... Uh, sleep for a few hours and get in and watch film. So I'm looking a little bit uh, worse for the wear probably today <laughs> than I was last night. But thanks for having me here. It was a good start to the season and just kind of kind of excited to get it rolling for real. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and like you mentioned, good way to start the season with a win always makes it a little easier to go into that next game and continue on. But uh, as you were mentioning, season starting, you got a lot of new faces. How did you guys look this year? Yeah, you know, we've got six guys that are new to our program. Uh, three of those guys played last night. So... Um, that's always a challenge to work them together with the returners and our returners have done a nice job of kind of helping everybody get settled in and that sort of thing but um, you know we played a team last night and, and they ended up playing about 30 minutes of zone defense so they switched up on us and we have those three new guys that haven't worked much zone we've only done that one day in practice so far so we had to kind of learn on the fly and that's uh, I think most athletes would say that's the best way to learn is to get in those game situations practice is great you get better but sooner or later you have to get out there under the lights and you know it's fun to walk, walk in the gym and the popcorn's popping and there's a few few fannies in the seats as the older coaches say and then um, and then tip it up for real so I was proud of our guys to kind of learn on the fly as we went and um, just excited to kind of see those new guys especially keep getting better and keep fitting with our returners. Um, as you mentioned two six new guys on the team this year when you went into the recruiting period after last season were you just looking for new faces or was there was there lots of spots you guys had to fill? You know we had we had three seniors last year that were a big part of our program and they moved on um, and we knew that we probably couldn't you know, just take three guys to replace those. It'll be a team effort. And then this year we've got uh, seven seniors, so it's a huge senior class. So we wanted to bring in some of those guys maybe that don't need to play right away this year, 
but they can kind of get that year of college under their belt. And a lot of a lot of people on campus that are college athletes, they know you that first year, it's just everything's new, new school, new teammates, new system, a little bit better athletes than what you're used to. So just kind of get that first year under the belt. And then next year when we have, after we lose these seven seniors this year, we'll really need some of those new faces this year to really step into some, some much bigger roles probably in the future. Okay. Um, and when you go into recruiting, I know uh, I, I talked to the assistant coach for the women's basketball team and they like to go into like Australia and New Zealand and look for recruits out there. Do you guys have a special area you like to target when, when you go out and look for new recruits? Yeah, and we've been all over the place, really. Um, you know, we've got to, we've tried to start everything in North Dakota and try to um, kind of own this area around here. And then uh, other than that, if you can play, we're going to try our best to find you and find guys that can fit with what we want to do. So, um, but we've got a great diversity on our team. You know, we have five North Dakota players out of our, we have 16 guys on our roster. And then, you know, we've got a few international players. We've got Brazil and Serbia and England and Australia represented and then some other states within the U.S. So. We've got a lot of diversity. It makes for a fun locker room, in my opinion. Our guys do a great job of learning about each other. And, and that's one thing about uh, being on a team in athletics that I love is you get to look for things that are the same about each other. And, and it's a great habit to have as, as you grow up and you know, get in the world, look for things that you like about each other, not things that are different, and point those things out. And I think it's been a great experience for the guys in our program. And um, it makes it fun every day, having those yeah. different personalities and different backgrounds and, and learning about new people. And with all the North Dakota guys you have on your team, you said uh, it almost makes it easier for fans to come watch games and fill up the That's the always good. A there's, a, there's a place to send guys for Thanksgiving. They can go yeah. with a, a teammate for Thanksgiving dinner or something like that. And it's always good to have those guys close by. You know, our North Dakota players and our team, their, their families really have embraced the rest of the guys, especially the guys from farther away, um, and helped them feel comfortable. And that's one thing about the city of Minot and our campus and, and really our whole state is there's a lot of people that just... Um, that, that will accept you for who you are, and if you if you give a good day's work, they're gonna they're gonna take care of you. And our program's been really good about that, and, and our families, especially the local guys, have really embraced the guys from farther away. Um, to go on to like the more farther away part, uh, I was looking through your bio on the web page, and it says you travel around doing basketball clinics, not just in the United States, but you also travel over to Africa. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, it's been a great experience for me. I've been fortunate to travel. I think I've been on I think five different continents now to do to do uh, to do camps and and clinic we do camps uh, for, for youth we do coaches clinics for coaches um, you know we do a lot of different activities just kind of uh, basketball is a, a sport that's loved worldwide and, and you know some places are a little bit more rich in the culture of it um, but some places it's relatively new but there's people that love it everywhere and, and a lot of times we've had humanitarian aid tied into those trips uh, where we'll get into schools and we'll just talk about um, you know, growing as a person, we'll talk about personal hygiene stuff. We'll take some, um, sometimes we've had doctors or nurses that do kind of a side project along with our basketball stuff. So I've been fortunate to do that, really blessed. And it's been, it's, it's really helped me as a coach. You know, this summer I was in Kazakhstan and gave a, an hour speech with a Russian translator. And it's an experience I didn't know that I'd have. And I made some jokes that probably didn't translate very well. And there was some blank, blank stares looking at me. But um, I think it helps you grow as a coach. And, and I, I'm big on getting out of your comfort zone. And uh, being in some of those places has definitely um, made me appreciate what I have, but also just get to know new people and had some, and make some great new friends really across the globe. Yeah, and you mentioned like that there's humanitarian aid in it too. Is this a kind of a thing you started on your own, or is it a program that you joined that does it? Right. I started with so the first trip I did was with Athletes in Action, okay. um, and they they go worldwide in a lot of different sports, and I got involved with their basketball uh, side of it, and then just met some people through that who kind of have that same vision of. Using, you know, they like to coach basketball, but they love to use it to help people more than anything else. And um, so just kind of looking to continue to do that. And we have some plans in the works for, for this year to go somewhere new and host some more clinics. And, um, and hopefully, you know, and it doesn't hurt if you see a 6'10 guy that wants to come play in the U.S. and has the grades. It's not, not bad to bring somebody yeah. uh, back over as well. So you maybe can use it a little bit as a recruiting tool as well. Yeah. Um, I also know you don't always go over alone. You traveled last year with the team to a tournament. Um, was it in Costa Rica? We went to Puerto Rico Puerto last Rico. year with the team. Um, we used an exemption where you can travel and get a few extra games. And, um, you know, basketball has been, it's taken me to a lot of places. We kind of mentioned that already, but you kind of forget, you know, the first time I was on a plane was when I was a college athlete. And, I, you know, and we didn't travel much when I was a kid. And I got on a plane to go to the national tournament when I was playing. And I thought it was pretty cool. And got to make some other trips. And we went to Puerto Rico. And I think we had four or five guys who'd never seen the ocean. And we had, you know, we had an hour of free time. And off they went. And they, they were diving in there right away. And, uh, but just to kind of help those guys see some different things and learn. And we try to do some um, educational stuff while we're there, some of the history of where we're at and the culture. And um, that was a great trip. It's a good team builder. Um, you get in those situations um, that are maybe outside your comfort zone, you have to really rely on each other too. And they kind of, you know, there's some people that don't speak English and you're trying to get around and, 
you get a little closer with your teammates that way, I think. So it was a great experience. Hopefully we can do that in the future. There's a limit on that about every three or four years. I think the NCAA lets us do that, those types of trips. And, it, and our guys really embraced it, did a ton of fundraising to kind of cover their costs. So we'd love to do it again sometime and take a team again. Yeah, so you guys you do a lot of things. And, uh, of course, more games coming up this season. We talked about your next home game coming up in the middle of November. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day. I know you had to come from practice for this, but it uh, means a lot to us for you to come in and tell us about how the game went and a little bit how you do things over in the basketball yeah. program. So thanks for coming. Again, this is head, our MSU men's basketball head coach, Matt Merkin. Uh, that's about all we have for the show, so thanks again. Um, we're going to wrap up real quick here. Song of the Week, Halloween theme, Monster Mash by Bobby Pickett and the Crypt Kickers. Don't forget to check out Halloween at the Auditorium if you have children or if you don't, a Magicon. That's going to be an exciting thing too. So thanks for joining us today on MCU Inside Out. Tune in next week. From my laboratory in the castle east To the master bedroom where the vampires feast The ghouls all came from their humble abode To get a jolt from my electrode.